Hello, good people. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Wanted to hop on. I've been kind of studying parables in my personal Jesus time, and I wanted to hop on and share a parable with you today. So we're going to be talking out of Luke 18, and we're going to start in verse 9. Um, let me tell you our subject first, though, what we're going to be talking about. We are going to be talking about pride today. Now, before you turn off this video, I want to tell you this. A lot of times, it's those of us who don't think that we need these teachings who need it the most. Amen. So let me put it this way. If you are a human and you have blood running through your veins, we need teachings on pride occasionally. Amen. You could be the most humble Christian out there, but I want to tell you, none of us are Jesus Christ. None of us have lived a perfect life. Therefore, we need this. Amen. Okay. So let's look at that. All of that to say, let's look at this. This is Luke 18. We're going to start in verse 9 today. And it says, Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. We got to pause already. This is just the first verse and we got to pause and talk about it, okay? It says that those trusted in themselves and in their own righteousness rather than trusting in the righteousness of God and what Jesus did on the cross. In other words, they were trusting in their own good works. You guys, I want to tell you, what gets us saved is not our good works. Now, should we demonstrate good fruit as a Christian? Of course we should. That's part of repentance, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on because that is critical, and it's a part of the gospel message that a lot of people are leaving off these days. But I want to tell you guys, what gets us saved is us accepting Jesus Christ, believing in him, and what he did for us on the cross. Amen? Okay? Because none of us are perfect, and none of us have lived a good enough life to get us into heaven. That's why Jesus was necessary. That's why his sacrifice and what he did for us was necessary, you guys, okay? So that's a key thing that we got to notice right off the bat about this scripture, is they were trusting in their own righteousness rather than Jesus Christ. Amen, over their personal lives. All right, let's continue. Verse 10, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. This absolutely cracks me up, y'all. <laughs> it says the Pharisee stood praying with himself, you guys. You know, did you hear that mention God in there once? No. And technically he may have been praying to God, but we can clearly tell from this scripture that may not have been his motivation. You know, we don't know that 100%. But it says he was praying with himself. I just want you to get a mental image of this. It was all about, you know, him looking good. It was all about him getting his check mark of completion for the day. His righteousness, his works, all of that. And so that just, that phrase cracks me up every time I read it in the Bible. Okay, let's keep going. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. Never mind that he had probably lied in his life, that he had probably stolen, he had probably dishonored his mother and father, he had probably committed adultery by looking at a woman in lust, X, Y, Z. You know, never mind all of that, but he's going to list off all of his good works, right? Okay, see the problem with this? Let's keep going, all right? He said, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. So he's listing off all of these wonderful good works, kind of a thing that he's done in his life. And then I want us to look at this scripture. This is verse 13. It says, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Here's the deal, you guys. Have you guys ever worked with someone who's trying to overcome an addiction? Maybe some of you guys are counselors. Maybe you've assisted with some sort of recovery program. One of the first things they will tell you a lot of the time is they will say, in order to get someone well, they have to admit they have a problem. Because if you don't think you have a problem, you're not going to try to get well. You're not going to try to overcome that thing. Amen. One of the scriptures that I love 
that Jesus talks about is he says that, you know, it's not those people who are well who need a doctor. It's the sick people who need a doctor. And so I think a lot of the times as Christian, especially as we mature as Christians, we've got to be careful not to get into a prideful and puffed up place. And I think this is especially hard for more mature believers. Maybe those of you guys who are in a leadership role in some way, shape or form, because the more knowledge we acquire in our personal lives, the more we have to be purposeful to go low, the more we have to be purposeful to stay humble, the more that we have to be purposeful to remember our beginnings, to remember how much we are dependent upon Jesus Christ in our personal lives, okay? Um, all of that to say, I, if I ever have t-shirts one day, I want to create myself a t-shirt that says I'm a branch because one of my favorite scripture verses in the Bible, Jesus talks about, I'm the vine, you're the branches, right? So I want you guys to think about this practically. Does a branch survive on its own? Let's say a branch falls off of a tree right? Does that branch survive on its own if it's not connected to that trunk, if it's not connected to the vine, whatever it may be? Of course not, because that branch can't sustain itself. That power, that life that is sustaining that branch comes from the vine, comes from that trunk, whatever it may be, right? And so I think a lot of the time what happens with Christians, especially as they get more maturity and they learn more in Christ, is the devil will sneak this stuff in gradually. It doesn't happen all at once in our personal lives a lot of the time. But what he'll do is he will slowly start to, you know, get us to not recognize that we're a branch. He'll start to go, you can do this stuff on your own. Look at all your good works. Look at all of this stuff that you've learned. You know more than that person, so you got to be better than them right? And so he'll get us in this place where we just kind of get these big heads on our shoulders and we miss the fact that we can do nothing out of our own righteousness. You know, it is our connection to that vine, it is our connection to Jesus Christ, to God, you know, that sustains us. Amen. That's the only reason that we are able to be righteous is because of God, of Holy Spirit on the inside of us that's helping us. Amen. And so, all of that to say, I think that we've got to be very, very careful. I think that as a, as a Christian, a lot of times, what the devil wants us to do is he wants us to depend on our own good works, quote unquote. He wants us to go into our God times just so we can get our check mark of completion for the day so we don't feel guilty. And, you know, he wants us to start trusting in all this stuff rather than trusting in what Jesus did for us. Amen. Now, Let's talk about this whole repentance concept, okay? Because I wanna to talk to you guys about a part of repentance that I have not heard many people talking about in the church and we have got to talk about it, okay? So here's the deal. John the Baptist in the Bible, and I would encourage you guys, you go look it up for yourself. Never take my word for it. You go look in the Bible on this stuff, okay? He would not even baptize people unless they stated that they were willing to repent. Amen. I think in Christian culture, a lot of the time right now, where the current church has gotten it wrong, not everybody, but some people are preaching a gospel where they say, all you've got to do is pray this cutesy little prayer and you can keep living like the world. You can keep doing whatever and it doesn't matter. You guys, I want to tell you, the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. So we're not saved by our own good works and our own good fruit. We're saved by Jesus Christ. However, if there is a true conversion with a Christian, you're going to start seeing good fruit in their life because there's going to be an action of repentance that happens. So what does repentance mean? Repentance means that we turn and go in the other direction. We give up that old lifestyle. We give up all of that stuff and we say, God, I want to turn it around and I want to live for you. Amen. Here's the part a lot of people leave out about repentance. It's this whole concept of I'm the vine and you're the branches that Jesus tells us about, right? So a lot of people, when they think of repentance, they go, it's all about me. It's all about my good works and all this stuff. And then they forget about the dependency piece. Amen. They forget that they're a branch, you know, and they start to try to do it all on their own. But I want to tell you guys that humility is recognizing that every ounce of righteousness that we have, it doesn't come from us. It came because we're sustained by that vine. Amen. And we need to give God glory for sustaining us and helping us. And I think the major difference in this parable between that tax collector and between the Pharisee was the tax collector understood something that the Pharisee did not understand. And you know, what's interesting is I probably, and I'm just assuming here, we don't see this in the Bible, but the Pharisee probably had more knowledge than that tax collector, honestly. He probably understood more. You know, he was doing all of these religious works. He probably had a pretty good knowledge of the Bible. A lot of the Pharisees did back in the day, but he was missing 
missing the most important piece and it was that humility piece and the I'm a branch piece. That's what I'm calling it today. He was missing the fact that such a critical part of repentance is recognizing how much we need a savior. Such a critical part of repentance is recognizing I can't do good works in my own strength. I've got to have God the Father. I've got to have Jesus backing me up on this stuff. And you know, whatever I do, I need to give him glory because he's the one who sustains me. If I get separated from that vine, I am in big trouble in my personal life. Amen. And so all of that to say, God is the only one who can judge whether or not someone is truly saved. But if it's a true conversion, God loves us too much to leave us where we're at. Amen. As a Christian. And so we're going to start to see a change in fruit and someone who is truly repentant and someone who has truly given their life to Christ and who is trying to walk as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I think it's critical, the attitude, you know, whenever we catch ourselves as a Christian looking down on someone else because they don't know as much, or whenever we find ourselves kind of turning our nose up at somebody, or whenever we find ourselves, you know, just going in to get our check mark of completion for the day, or whenever we find ourselves kind of trusting in our own good works rather than the power of the cross, we need to pause and go, God, I repent. I'm walking in pride. And I want to tell you guys, I've been there. I need a triple dose of this all the time, you guys. We all need this from time to time. And Satan's number one goal is to get you as a branch not connected to that vine, to get you feeling like you can do it on your own, to get you to leave off that part of repentance that has that humility aspect to it. He wants you to just trust in your good works. He doesn't want you to trust in Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you to stay connected to that vine. But I want to tell you guys today, We've got to have it all, you guys. We've got to trust in Jesus' righteousness and what he did for us on the cross. We've got to trust that he rose from the dead. Amen. But we also have to have that turnaround with our lifestyle. You know, we can't keep living like the world, you know. The Bible clearly talks about how we have to repent. And, you know, our repentance has to have that humility component. It's not just our good works. Yes, we're going to demonstrate good works, and that's critical for us to demonstrate good works. But where we get tripped up is it's not in our own strength, ladies and gents. It's not. It comes from being connected to that vine. And so our job as a Christian is to stay connected to that vine, is to have God time, is to bring stuff to the Lord and to say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. I'm a sinner, you know, and I'm grateful for how far you brought me. But God, I understand that I'm just a branch. At the end of the day, I'm a branch and I've got to stay connected to that vine to have success in my personal life. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.